come on as opposition to the U.S. occupation heats up. The people of Czechoslovakia celebrate as a man once jailed for his views becomes president. And a bomb threat prompts some Northwest Airlines passengers to change plans. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening, I'm Deborah Norville. Tom Brokaw's off tonight. The Vatican is using sharp words to publicly denounce the continued American siege of its Panama City Embassy. Vatican officials say they want Manuel Noriega to leave the nunciatur on his own and insist the United States has no right to pressure them. In Panama, meanwhile, U.S. troops report progress in rounding up some important Noriega loyalists. More on all of this from Don Oliver in Panama City. U.S. forces continued to arrest people who had close relationships with Noriega. As these leaders of the Panama Telecommunications Union were being led away, the crowd shouted, Justice! Justice! They said I have weapons. I don't, I don't have weapons. But as they were being taken away, a second group of Panamanians showed their anger at the arrest, shouting, Unity! Unity! Yesterday, a U.S. Embassy official reported the arrest of Noriega's closest advisor, a former Israeli intelligence agent, Mike Harari, a shadowy figure thought to have been involved in gun running to Nicaragua. But officials of the new Panamanian government say there are no charges against him. It's going to be very hard to pin him down and, and to bring charges against him. I, I, I guess they're just holding him in custody to see what, what's next. Now there is confusion over whether the Israeli is in custody or not. A spokesman for the U.S. military command said he had no information that Harari was ever arrested. And U.S. Embassy officials are now saying that they're not sure he ever was. There is also confusion over a report that the bodies of two American civilians were found, shot in the head and buried. Military spokesman said the death of one man, Richard Paul, had already been reported on December 22nd. The other American victim had been taken dead to a hospital and buried a week ago, misidentified as a Panamanian. He, in fact, was 47-year-old Raymond Dragseth, shown in this picture with his mother. Dragseth was a professor at Panama Canal College was dragged by armed men from his apartment in this high-rise the night of the U.S. invasion. Dragseth's daughter, Caroline, said it was the work of family members that located his body, that they received very little help from the U.S. Embassy. I feel very cheated because President Bush stated that the reason for this invasion was to protect American lives. And yet, I've had two deaths in my family, not only my father, but my cousin, Richard Paul. The fugitive former dictator Noriega remains holed up in the Vatican Embassy in Panama City. A Vatican spokesman in Rome said attempts are being made to convince Noriega to leave the embassy. But he insisted in strong terms they were facing what he called an occupying power, which has no right to exert pressure. An occupying power cannot interfere with the work of a diplomatic mission, nor demand that a person seeking asylum in that mission be handed over to it. The White House, apparently wanting to avoid a fight, said merely, the Vatican is doing a good job. Don Oliver, NBC News, Panama City. And a complication if Noriega ever stands trial in this country. Justice Department officials admitted today they were in such a rush to indict Noriega they may have ignored some procedures that would prevent classified material from being disclosed in court. Also coming up tonight on NBC Nightly News, in Czechoslovakia, a man who had been an enemy of the state becomes chief of state. And a look at the major events of 1989. It was a stunning year of change around the world. For over a hundred years, in countless warm and friendly places, it's been Miller time. At Miller, we're proud to have always brewed our beer carefully and responsibly. And that's how we'd like you to drink our beer, carefully and responsibly. So the next time you're having any one of our beers, the next time it's Miller time for you, we'd like to ask you to do one very simple thing. Be responsible. Think when you drink. It's hard to face the day But he knows your favorite ways Cold you're starting to brew The aroma's calling you Wake up with Mountain Grown Folgers decaffeinated Mountain Grown coffee has a more enticing aroma and richer flavor And it's decaffeinated? The best part of waking up your morning It's Folgers in your cup 
From prisoner to president of Czechoslovakia, Václav Havel today completed a remarkable political journey. And he might have written the script himself. The playwright and human rights activist is Czechoslovakia's first non-communist president in 41 years. NBC's Rick Davis is in Prague. It was a victory march for two men. Václav Havel, the often jailed dissident, now the president of Czechoslovakia. Alexander Dubček, expelled from the Communist Party after his reform movement was crushed in 1968. He is now Speaker of Parliament. The majority of those who elected and applauded them are members of the Communist Party. A few weeks ago, the party called both men political outlaws. November 19, 1989, the first meeting of Civic Forum. It was Václav Havel who brought the dissident groups together after police attacked students demanding reform. On this night, there was not even a dream that Havel would be president. But in the weeks that followed, the demand for him to be president came from hundreds of thousands. And today, Václav Havel reviewed the presidential guard. Seven months ago, he was under guard, serving one of several prison terms totaling five years. Cheered by thousands, Havel pledged to lead the country to free election. He said there was no time for hate or revenge. It's a theme he repeats often. No, but I'm not um, able to hate. And uh, I hope that um, that violence and hatred will leave our country. The music of the mass celebrating his election was triumphant. And this was a place of winning. Václav Havel, Alexander Dubček, and the people of Czechoslovakia. Despite the celebration, President Havel faces major problems, a declining economy, backward production methods. Parts of the nation are among the most polluted areas on earth. The celebrating will end, but not yet, not this night. Rick Davis, NBC News, Prague. Four days after the execution of Nicolae Ceausescu, the new government of Romania today stripped the communist symbol from the flag and changed the country's name, dropping the words Socialist Republic. The army, meanwhile, declared victory. Tanks that were guarding the center of Bucharest returned to their bases today, although scattered sniper attacks continue. There was a memorial for the defense minister who was executed by Ceausescu for refusing to fire on anti-government demonstrators. And for the first time, Ceausescu's private residence was open to foreign journalists, showing a far different lifestyle from that of the people he ruled. And more on the luxury in which Nikolai Ceausescu lived, it was revealed today that Ceausescu kept 80 servants at his private beach house by the Black Sea. Part of their duties, to sift sand on the beach to keep it clean. In Israel today, a highly unusual show of solidarity. Arab and Jewish women marching together. They were joined by women from Europe, more than 4,000 in all, demonstrating together against Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Near the end, some of them tried to raise a Palestinian banner. Israeli police moved in with clubs and tear gas. 16 demonstrators were arrested. Now, for a limited time, get a guaranteed rebate at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. If the rebate increases on your eligible vehicle after January 31st, you'll get a check for the difference. No other car company has ever done that. The guaranteed rebate from the Chrysler Corporation. See your Jeep and Eagle dealer now. Offer ends soon. That's my wife, Julie Yancey. She just found out we won the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes. Julie's generally a pretty cool lady. But when you win a million dollars, I guess you have something to shout about. What would you do if you won $10 million? You can. Just watch your mail for this house and enter the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes right away. On January 26th, you could be our next millionaire. But when you win, try to act cool. My pain is at the bottom of my elbow. It's throbbing. The more you twist, the more the pain hurts. When I get a pain like that, I will take aspirin. Today, Richard Mazzancini is trying extra strength Tylenol gel caps. For pain like his, why take aspirin or ibuprofen when nothing works better than Tylenol gel caps? The pain is gone. It's, it's great. It doesn't hurt. It feels fluid. I'm convinced I'm going to be a gel cap user. Tylenol gel caps, only from Tylenol. For everyday pain, nothing works better. 
And for your cold this winter, now try Tylenol cold medication. A bomb threat against a Northwest Airlines flight from Paris to Detroit tomorrow has prompted a massive security increase. 130 people were booked on that flight. At least 30 have accepted the airline's offer to switch their reservations. NBC's Stephen Fraser has more. In Paris, Northwest Airlines ticket clerks helped some passengers booked on Flight 51 to Detroit mm -hmm. change their travel plans. This woman switched to another airline. Northwest executive Kevin Whalen went to Paris to arrange extra security. But we are working very closely with the uh, French police and uh, United States authorities to uh, ensure that this flight goes safely tomorrow. Whalen, who will be on the flight himself, won't reveal what measures the airline will take to protect it. But there is nothing secret about its efforts to notify 130 passengers of danger. Passengers are being contacted now uh, by phone if we have phone numbers for them in Paris. Uh, we have numbers for some of them, others we don't. Uh, at the very least, they'll be advised when they show up at the airport to check in for the flight. Douglas Miller says Northwest was following its own long-standing guidelines, but in fact its actions are a departure from industry practice. Northwest was asked by the FBI, the FAA, and other agencies investigating the threat not to make it public because they said that would make their investigation harder. We receive several hundred threats a year, and you can't cancel every flight because you've received a threat against that flight. The threat was phoned in by a man saying he would avenge the life sentences given to these two Palestinians last week by a Swedish court for their part in earlier bombings. One is suspected in the bombing last year of Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie. Today, a man who lost a brother in that bombing commended Northwest for its forthrightness and assailed the FAA. I'll take my chances with public notices now versus the inadequacy and the incompetency of the FAA under Raymond Salazar. Northwest says it may yet cancel the flight if not satisfied it's secure, but plans now are for it to depart as scheduled. Stephen Frazier, NBC News, New York. Firefighters in New York City spent much of the afternoon battling a huge blaze at a power plant today, one that briefly threatened the city's fashionable Upper East Side with a major blackout. The fire resulted from an early afternoon explosion. One worker was killed, 25 others injured, two of them seriously. For several hours, more than 130,000 people, most of them in apartment buildings, were without power, and six local hospitals were operating on full emergency power. By nightfall, though, power had been restored in most areas. The fire, which began with a ruptured gas main, was extinguished by 6 o'clock this evening. <laughs> No tough sinus cold is going to sideline these guys. Congestion, pressure, maximum strength Tristan is tougher to sweep away congestion, pressure, and pain. And it won't make you drowsy when you can't call in sick. Call on Tristan. American family's biggest prize ever, 20, yes, $20 million could be all yours next month. Watch TV January 26 when I announce the winning numbers for all these prizes including the biggest prize of all, $20 million. Be sure to enter America's only sweepstakes with my picture. It could make you super rich. $20 million rich this January. Enter today. This is big. For the first time in my life, I understand what nutrition is. And I know where to start. The Surgeon General of the United States recommends seven guidelines for nutritious eating. Then you do a little homework and you find one leading cereal meets all seven. Total. That's right. This one. Whole wheat total. So now you understand. What the Surgeon General recommends, total delivers. The freedom to say and think what we believe is ensured by this document. Join us and the National Archives in celebrating the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. I eat nutritious meals with plenty of fruit and vegetables, so how come I'm the one with painful gas? Surprise! Foods high in nutrition are often high in gas. But Gas-X gets rid of the gas, so you feel better fast. Eat right and feel right with Gas-X. 
Before this holiday season ends, the death toll from traffic accidents is expected to reach nearly 1,800. Hundreds of those will be victims of drunk drivers. To help reduce those numbers in the future, one town is forcing drunk drivers to face up to the terrible consequences of their acts. NBC's Keith Morrison reports. And what we're hoping... In Redmond, Washington, they are fighting drunk driving by talking about pain. Um, holidays are super hard for any of us. Um, Christmas is really hard. Shirley Anderson is talking to people convicted of drunk driving, sentenced to be here to listen. And we walked down the aisle to the casket. She and a judge came up with the plan, hoping that the stories told here might save a life or two. None of these people are killed by somebody down on Skid Row or whatever, or a convict or whatever. It's always somebody nice, just like one of you. It's human life. And the victim is often someone like Marion Cobb, whose husband was killed by a drunk. He came after me and he said, Mrs. Cobb, I'm sorry. And I looked at him and I said, the hard thing is I can't even forgive you. And I thought I was a Christian in my life. He said, I don't expect you to forgive me. I don't expect God to forgive me. I can't forgive myself. And that's what he lives with day after day. They are stories told without rancor or accusation by volunteers like Dan Porter, who killed two people with his car, spent four years in jail, and can't forget. It's taken me almost nine years. That keeps coming back. And it's so hard to get up here and explain this to people, to tell them, tell them that you're a total failure in life. The listeners came because they had to, listened to the pain, and told us they were glad they came for this. And don't, don't drink and drive. It may be wishful thinking, but in Redmond they say, it is making a difference. Keith. Keith Morrison, NBC News. Former Yankee manager Billy Martin was buried today after a funeral mass at New York's St. Patrick's Cathedral. Martin's funeral was attended by those with whom he shared fame. Baseball greats from the 1950s to the 1980s. And one very famous Yankee fan who used to live in the White House. On the eve of its 1990 survey, the Census Bureau has named Nevada as the state that had the most population growth over the last five years, more than 10 percent, more than 18 percent. Four other states grew by at least 10 percent. The big loser, Wyoming. It lost nearly 7 percent of its population. Six other states also lost population. From the White House today, a curt comment. Heads of state do not endorse cold medicines. Spokesman Marlon Fitzwater said that should put an end to the controversy over a commercial for a cold remedy. ABC and CBS have refused to air the commercial unless its two stars, George Bush and Mikhail Gorbachev, give their approval. The commercial talks about ending the Cold War. People just don't understand. Constipation can really tie you down. They say, take a laxative and hope it doesn't go to work on the way to the ball game. Oh. Then I found a simple solution. Daily fiber therapy with Metamucil. It's safe, not a harsh chemical. I can even take Metamucil daily for the extra fiber I need to get regular and stay that way. That's important to me and a lot of little people. Metamucil, and you can stay regular for the rest of your life. If you took an Actifed tablet for your cold, there's something you should know. Contact Maximum Strength Caplets work twice as long. Isn't I? Until there's a cure, there's contact. A rebate is a rebate is a rebate. Right? Wrong. Now, for the first time, Chrysler Plymouth, Dodge, Jeep, and Eagle offer the guaranteed rebate. On the world's best-selling 1990 minivans, convertibles, and Jeep Cherokees. If the rebate goes up this model year, we'll pay you the difference. No other car company has ever done that. The guaranteed rebate from Chrysler. Offer ends soon. 
If you'd like to win $10 million from Publishers Clearinghouse, do what these $10 million winners do. Enter. Don't put it in the garbage like my neighbor over here. Really? What do you have to lose? The Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes. It pays to enter. 1989. So much to remember in a year of so many remarkable events. A year of deepening crises for America. AIDS, homelessness, scandal. But it was also a year of great hope, producing a crush of breaking news that changed our world right up to the final days of the decade. Tonight, a look back at 1989 by producer Frank Shanbacker and editor George Liebert. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Take I've been in the Bay Area for about 20 years. I've never seen anything like this. It's almost unbelievable that we could construct something like this that would be so vulnerable. If this isn't the big one, I don't know what would be left of this town if we got anything bigger. Our dad is sitting right in the middle of uh, downstairs apartment. I have no idea how it got there, but it's there. We have no gas, no refrigerator, no light. The house is halfway gone. What are we supposed to do? Oh, God. Where is the other part of the aircraft? Oh, my gosh, this is it. I remember turret two. They were the life, the spirit, and the soul of our ship. There will never be answers to the questions that haunt us. This whole thing is ridiculous. It's a big cover-up in my opinion. We have man-made destruction that uh, probably has not been equal since Hiroshima. I mean, who are they conning? They're not going to clean this up. My children won't touch apple juice, applesauce. Did you see your child inside? I didn't see many people. There was a guy standing on top of the building. He shot some of the kids. You like to shoot a machine gun, they think there's something wrong with you. Weapon of war used against two sheriff's deputies. I'm not about to suggest that a semi-automated hunting rifle be banned. <laughs> This is crack cocaine. The cartels fight back against our police protecting a multi-billion dollar enterprise. The notion that these cartel leaders are invincible is uh, put to rest, I think, with this incident. Ariega is a very uh, skilled thug. He's eluded us. He's not running drugs. He's not running Panama. At present, he's just running. He hasn't got a chance now. Now that we know where he is, he's no threat. The United States is eager to work with the Panamanian people to rebuild their economy. It is a major offensive action by the FMLN. The history of atrocious death in El Salvador has come from the extremes of both right and left. This is not the victory of Mrs. Aquino. This is the victory of America over our military organization. If you murder, you must die. Don't be late, because they are very serious to hang us. I think that if Iran decided they wanted those hostages to come out of there, that would happen. What'll I do? Eligibility means lifetime banishment. I did not bet on baseball. 
It's been a wonderful 20 years. Not only could it be my last Wimbledon, but it could be my last match. Strike a cop, you go to jail. It's not over, so it's over. Have <laughs> I made mistakes? Oh boy, how many? I shall never surrender or retreat. I deserve, certainly, the most extreme punishment society has. Let me spell abortion for you once. M-U-R-D-E-R. We are not killing babies! We are saving women's lives! When you think about the way in which some countries handle dissent, one has to be proud of what the Supreme Court did. Are you afraid? No. Why not? I don't think they will kill me. They just killed another one in the square. Shevardnadze says Soviet involvement violated the norms of proper behavior. A new breeze is blowing across the Soviet Union. Let this spirit of openness grow. In short, tear down the Iron Curtain. Oh! And that's Nightly News for a Friday. I'm Deborah Norville. Catherine Couric will be here tomorrow, and Tom will be back next week. Thanks to all of you for watching, and from all of us here at NBC News, good night. And good evening, I'm Joe Birch for Action News 5. Tonight at 10, Harold Grater will bring you a live report from Dallas where the hogs and vols are preparing for the Cotton Bowl. Join us tonight at 10.